Hi everybody, this is Carolyn from Homesteading Family and happy St. Patrick's Day. Hey, we love eating good corned beef on St. Patrick's Day. This year we're a few days late because we just returned from traveling for several weeks and so I wasn't able to get the uh, corned beef ready in time. So it's your lucky day. I'm going to show you how to make your own homemade corned beef. Now, I love the corned beef that you can get at the store. I grew up on that and I always enjoyed the flavor. But as I became more health conscious and I was feeding my family, I just became uncomfortable with feeding my family all those chemicals that they would put in there and just felt like that is so unnecessary. The original corned beef that was made, you know, long ago that people ate for centuries doesn't have all those chemicals. Why do we need it? And so I'm I researched and I did all sorts of different things and boy I finally built up the courage to make my first corned beef and it was amazing. It was so good. Oh my goodness, you don't need the little packages, squishy packages of stuff from the grocery store. You can make it yourself. It's healthier, it's cheaper, and it is so much better. You are going to be totally amazed. We make this at least once a year now, every year, um, and really we would make it more often than that if I just did it because we love it so much. Now the ideal cut of meat to use for this is gonna be a beef brisket. And this year when we butchered the beef, the brisket ended up in the ground beef. So instead, I have some sirloin roasts, and I'm sorry, some chuck roasts today. And I have several of them. You're looking for about four to five pounds of roast. So if you can get it all in one roast, that would be great. I'm actually, for our family, making about a double, maybe even a triple batch here with several roasts because we're a large family and we really like this stuff. So I'm gonna show you how easy this is to make. Super easy. So what I have here is a half gallon of water or two quarts. And I'm just gonna put that in a pot that I'm gonna use on the stove two quarts of good, fresh, clean water. And I have two cups of good salt. Now this salt is what's gonna be the, um, the preserving agent and the corning agent in the corned beef. So use good salt. You can use sea salt, you can use Himalayan salt. This is Redmond Real Salt and uh, it's a pink salt and so we really like this stuff. Two cups of it right on in to your water there. Now come the spices and this is just for the seasoning so you can adjust these to your taste. This is uh, peppercorns, mustard seed, this is some allspice, there's some whole cloves in here. Oh no, I forgot the cinnamon sticks. You've got to have cinnamon sticks. Let me grab those. I think cinnamon sticks are over here. There we go. Okay. You've got to have a few cinnamon sticks in here. So, the recipe calls for about two, but I'm going to go ahead and double it, like I said. So I've got four cinnamon sticks. So I'm going to put those right on in. I will give you the exact amounts that the recipe calls for for the different spices uh, in the comments below. So go ahead and look for that there. So we're going to put those seeds and spices right in. Now this is, we have ginger, we have uh, garlic powder, and I have some savory in here because I find that it grows better here than thyme. But if what you have is thyme, use that instead. That's, that's actually what the recipe calls for. So we're gonna just put all of that right in there too. And, ooh, I've got my bay leaves. This is about five bay leaves, and I actually have a bay plant that I keep in my window, at my windowsill and here in the kitchen. And so these are fresh bay leaves, and oh, they smell so good. You would just die over these fresh bay leaves. Delicious. So I'm going to put all those in too. I'm going to just kind of tear these up a little so that they release their aroma a little bit faster. Okay, and I'm going to just give this a stir. And now I am going to go over to the stove and I am going to heat this just until all of the salt is dissolved. It doesn't need to be boiling just until it's dissolved. If you get it too hot, it'll just slow down the process a little because you'll have to wait for it to cool back down before you can use it. So go ahead and bring it up, stirring it pretty constantly until that salt's dissolved. It'll just take a minute. I'll be right back. 
All right, well, I have gone ahead and heated this and gotten that salt dissolved, and it didn't take very much, just a few minutes. In fact, I can still stick my finger right on in there without any problem, and it, it's not too hot. It doesn't take much to dissolve salt. You don't have to get it anywhere near boiling, really. So, boy, it's starting to smell really good, too. Those spices are starting to release their aromatic qualities, and they're really quite good. So, now what I want to do is I want to take my other half of my water, two more quarts, or another half gallon here, and I want to add it to this just to really bring that temperature right on down. You do not want your brine to be warm when it hits the meat. If you overheat it a little bit and it gets too warm, um, and this doesn't even bring the temperature down enough, then you go ahead and just stick it in the fridge and you can finish the next few steps later. It's not a problem. Uh, in fact, you can sit it in there overnight and let it get nice and cold. That's fine too. So what you're looking for is your brine to be lower body temperature or lower, okay? You don't want it to be very warm. You certainly don't want anything that will even start cooking your meat because that will cause some spoilage. Now, this is going to the salt in this is going to really preserve this meat really well. And so, and it's gonna just turn it into this lovely tender product. So here we have, we have it all mixed together now. I've mixed in that extra water and it's all mixed together really well. And our next step here is going to be to get the brine completely covering the meat and you're going to need it to stay covered for several days. Uh, if you're going to do it in the refrigerator, some people are more comfortable with that, then about seven to ten days. Um, if you're going to leave it out on the countertop, which is perfectly fine with all this salt in there, it won't go bad. Um, the salt really acts as a great preservative. Then you can do it in about three days. I've, I've let it sit for up to five, six, seven days in a regular temperature kitchen absolutely no problem and it just gets better and better. So we need to find a container in your kitchen that is food safe and it can keep your, um, your meat totally submerged underneath the brine. You don't want any to hit above the air because then it won't be in that salt and that will go bad. So you don't want to ruin your meat like that. A very common way to do it is to put your meat into a Ziploc bag and then to fill it with a brine. Um, because you can kind of get all the air out of there and, and keep it under that brine. I really don't prefer that method because these um, non-rigid plastics really do leach. And you know, the whole point of me doing this at home is to get away from all those chemicals they put it in the store. So I really prefer to go with something that's less non-leaching or at least less leaching. Um, another option if you just had a smaller roast is to go with a glass gallon jar. That could work. Um, if you had an appropriate size crock, that would be wonderful. That's an eight gallon crock and that's just way too big for what we're doing right now. And all of my medium sized crocks are filled with food at the moment, so I can't use those. So my next best option for me is to go with a food grade bucket. And you know, this is a little big for what I'm doing, but it'll work and uh, we can make it work just fine. So if I had a medium option, I would do that. But right now, you know, you work with what you have when you're on a homestead and so that's what we're doing. So what we're going to do is go ahead and just arrange our meat down here. In fact, you know what, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just splash a little bit of the brine on the bottom because I wanna make sure all the parts of the meat are covered. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this brine in about half of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and start putting in my meat. I'm just arranging it so it's in there. You can move around loosely. I'm going to kind of, uh, you know, turn it a little bit over the next few days just to make sure that brine is really evenly getting on all of the pieces. Okay. You can see we're not going to have any problem with the amount of brine. The meat is well under already, but I'm going to go ahead and pour the rest of that brine and the rest of the seasonings right on the top. Now, this will start to float a little, the meat will. So if you have it in a container like this, where you have open space at the top, you really do need to go ahead and weight that meat down under something. Generally, I will put a good dinner plate on here and then um, 
maybe a bowl on top of that with something heavy, clean and heavy. You want everything to be very clean. It doesn't need to be sterile, but it does need to be clean. And um, so oftentimes I'll get a, a jar of, a sealed jar of food, or you can just put a jar fill it up with water and put a lid on and put it into a bowl on there just to keep the weight under now the or the meat under with the weight so i'm going to go ahead and do that here and then i am going to let this sit in the kitchen for about i'll probably go for about five days this time i like that little bit more brined flavor that we get from a longer one just right out my, my kitchen's not hot it's not summer here and so in the floor is on it's a concrete foundation and so I have a nice cool floor so that works really well in my kitchen it keeps it a little bit cool but feel free if you're more comfortable put it right in the refrigerator for about 10 days and that'll work out really well for you too and then after that amount of time I'm gonna take it out and I am gonna slow cook it all day long and oh I love it with some of the spices in it I go ahead and cook it in a little bit of the brine you don't want it too salty but you do want some of those spices is in there and so I'll cook it like that and then right at the end I'll put in some potatoes and some cabbage and oh we're gonna have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day feast maybe a week late have a great St. Patrick's Day guys enjoy and be healthy goodbye